In the words of the great Doc Brown, I am about to embark on an historic journey. And by historic journey, I mean I am about to rebuild a T56 manual transmission. Now, I've never actually rebuilt a transmission before, but as long as I can remember, I've been taking things apart and putting them back together, and I can only count a handful of times that I had more parts left over than when I started. On the table here is everything that I've assembled so far. I've got a Tremec manual that I printed out from their website. It's free if you go on there. I just printed it out and put it in a little binder, added some notes, studied it quite a bit. I've also got a dead blow hammer in case something doesn't want to cooperate. I've got a bearing separator and gear puller set. Got some lock ring and snap ring pliers. An assortment of wrenches, some punches for the various roll pins that are in the transmission, 3 8 ratchet and sockets, cordless ratchet, flat tip screwdriver, some 3 8 extensions. I believe that is a T40 Torx bit there that holds in a, a couple of Torx bolts, of course. And those are usually Loctited in, so I've got a propane torch to help with that. And this is the transmission I'm working with. It's out of my Trans Am. The car has 240 something thousand miles on it. I have no idea how many miles are on the transmission, but I can tell you it's definitely been rebuilt at least once. You can see over here uh, where you pry to separate the tail piece from the rest of the case. I don't know if you can see that in the video, but there's definitely some pry marks in there. So it's been in at least once. So I'm rather curious to see what this looks like on the inside. I'm assuming that it's original to the car, though I haven't bothered to actually verify. But as far as the symptoms that this transmission is experiencing that have motivated me to go ahead and go through with this, um, I've just noticed that the second gear isn't quite as smooth as it used to be. Um, it just doesn't feel right going into second. And I want to try to get this taken care of before any real damage gets done on the gears or the, the actual synchronizer assembly. I'm also expecting to find some wear on the main shaft. Uh, the T56 is kind of notorious for that, uh, where the fifth and sixth gear assembly presses down on the main shaft. They didn't really make that tight enough from the factory and over time it gets to develop a little bit of play and you've basically got that gear working back and forth on those splines. So enough talking about it. Let's get this thing opened up and see what we're dealing with. The first thing that the manual addresses is removing this rear tail housing. Uh, to do so, there are some bolts, but of course, uh, this has to come out of the way, the shift lever here on the rear. And to remove that, uh, we've got to knock this roll pin all the way through until uh, it comes out of the back here. like that. And then this piece will just slide off and the roll pin is going to get replaced. But I'm going to lay everything out on the table in the back. When you take your parts out, put them on your workbench exactly as you take them off in the same order. The next step is going to be removing the bolts that hold the tail housing on. There appear to be eight of them and it looks like they are a 15 millimeter. And good lord, are they tight. And I should have mentioned this already, but I've got this sitting on, oh, oh, excuse me, what is essentially a router table bench that I had made for my little wood shop here. And I just drilled three holes. I drilled one for the input shaft and then two on either side for the alignment pins that go into the adapter plate. For one, that allows you to work on the transmission standing straight up and I think that's going to make it a little bit easier for me doing this my first time. And those alignment pins lock into the top and make it a lot easier when you're trying to really get these bolts loose without the whole transmission trying to twist around. So I recommend doing that. Of course, whatever you set this on, make sure that it's not going to topple over and fall on your foot. This thing weighs well over 100 pounds and uh, I don't think anybody wants to experience that. Uh, 
that one wasn't nearly as tight. And this one makes up for it. And if you still have the original tag on the transmission, hang on to that. If you need to order any replacement parts, uh, those identification numbers can be helpful if you have to say, order a replacement gear or something like that, just to make sure that you are getting the right gear ratio. There's a recess that I showed you earlier with the pry marks in it. I'm gonna try to use that to break this loose. And there's another one here on this side. Just kind of want to be careful not to tear up the ceiling surfaces there. Don't get too careless. And this should, in theory, just lift right off. All right. In the tail housing here, you've got your reverse idler gear. And then you've also got your bearing races for your main shaft and your counter shaft extension, I believe it's called. You wanna check those, make sure that they're not overly worn or scored. These look good, which is a good thing because I am really lazy right now and I don't wanna to have to reshim the entire transmission. According to Tremec, basically if all the bearings are okay, there's no need to mess with any of the shims or anything. Uh, I'm not even gonna bother measuring the end play and preload and all those things. I'm just gonna say those look good and I'm gonna move on. So this is what things look like right after removing the housing. Back here are the magnets that catch all the metallic ferrous debris. If you see any big chunks on those magnets, go ahead and check your credit card balance right now because there's probably gonna be something pretty wrong inside, but that looks all right for a transmission with you know this many miles on it. Those magnets are gonna get removed and cleaned up, but for now I'm going to focus on disassembling this main shaft. There's a little rubber piece here that'll just lift off. And again, take it off of the transmission and then put it right over here without, you know, don't take it off and like flip it or anything. Just gonna go off and go right over here. And I don't know how well you can see it, but right here is our first lock ring. So I'm gonna get that out of the way. Also in the manual, it advises against uh, reusing some of the, the snap rings and lock rings. I'm gonna order a complete set just to be careful. So again, it came off like this. It's gonna go on the bench like that. In the manual, it advises using the gear puller to remove this. This is the uh, ring that the speedometer sensor senses speed with. I'm gonna try just removing it by hand first and see what happens. And it is sliding off, so that could be convenient or really bad. So off the shaft, onto the bench. And because I'm such a nice guy, I've rotated the transmission just a little bit because I realized this uh, shaft was right in the way. But your lock ring pliers are gonna be shaped somewhat, you know, like this. They're just basically kind of flat knurled little things on the end. Those are gonna go in your lock ring. And then when you squeeze the handle, it'll spread the lock ring apart. And once you've got it spread apart enough, you can just lift it off and put it on the bench. Had to double check the book because I kind of was thinking I was crazy and I just totally spaced out while I removed something in between the two lock rings, but there's just another lock ring right here. And then we've got a little caged bearing that should slide off without too much hassle. Onto the bench. And what do you know, there's another lock ring 
Ooh. Oh, there's a spacer there. Okay. Maybe I should slow down and start looking at the book a little bit more. Yep. There is a spacer here. Okay. So that's going to come off and go right on the bench. And beneath that is another locker ring. There is another spacer here. Like that. God, I hope I'm going to be able to put this back together. And then we've got the reverse gear. And there's a little wavy washer on there as well. So that goes between the synchronizer ring and the gear. I'm going to try to put that back on there. As you go, inspect the teeth on the gears. This gear doesn't exactly look brand new, but it doesn't look that bad either. So hopefully that's a good sign of the rest of the transmission. So it came off like this. It's going to go on the bench just like that. Now I'm going to take that wavy washer off and put it on the bench the way it came off. And right here, I'm going to have to shift things around again just a little bit. I'm going to do my best to kind of leave all of this together. Um, these caged bearings are going to have to come off. And the shaft looks worn, but it's not, it's not overly worn. So we'll see how that goes. But again, bearing came off like this. It's going to go right on the bench like that. My goal is to kind of remove this in one piece so I don't forget too much about how it goes back together, but this is the actual, this is the wear part, you know, this is what kind of takes the abuse on uh, when you shift into reverse. And man, that reverse synchronizer looks pretty bad. Uh, this actually doesn't look too bad, but uh, I don't know if you can see how rounded off those teeth are, and it's been jumping out of reverse occasionally. I'm afraid that's why. Hopefully the other side looks better, and I can just flip the synchronizer assembly over and use the other side. I don't know if that's been done already or not, so let's find out. There's another lock ring right here uh, that's holding this uh, reverse synchronizer assembly on, so I'm going to remove that. off the shaft onto the bench. And I am not gonna lie to you. I'm, I'm kind of nervous doing this. Um, I've taken things apart and put them back together more times than I can count in my life. But this is, this is an expensive thing and there's a lot of moving parts. So uh, if all else fails, I can go back to my own video to see how to put it together, I guess. So now at this point, um, you can't take the synchronizer assembly off because it's being held in by the shift fork. So I'm going to use the different snap ring pliers. Make sure you get the rustiest pair you own, preferably also the cheapest. And right here on this shaft is a snap ring that's holding this shift fork in. Once again, I'm pretty sure that the manual specifically references this particular snap ring uh, and says not to reuse it. So take that for what it's worth to you. Now uh, this synchronizer assembly and the shift fork should slide off all together and we'll get to find out how bad the other side of this looks. I'm going to try to keep this all assembled for now. Oh, and that's awesome. So right here, you can see this side is just beat to hell. On the other side, though, the side that doesn't look like it's been used yet, they look brand spanking new. So when I reassemble the transmission, all I got to do is flip this thing over 
And I've got a fresh synchronizer assembly on reverse. Yes. That is good news. All right. And then this thing is going to go right next to it. Moving right along, this gear right here is part of your five and six gear cluster. There's, there's two gears actually put together as one piece. The manual says to use a gear puller to remove this, and some transmissions may require that. Unfortunately, this is what I was talking about earlier, uh, where these, these splines that go through the gear can get really worn and cause a lot of play here between the gear and the main shaft, give you vibrations, those kinds of things. I'm about to find out if that's the case. Uh, fingers crossed. Let's see. If it comes off by hand, that's convenient, but not necessarily the best thing in the world. And yeah, it comes right out. So once I get this off, I can see what the shaft really looks like. The good news is the splines on the gear itself look really good. So worst case scenario, I can still reuse that, hopefully. They don't look especially worn. So it came off big gear on the top, little gear on the bottom. So I'm gonna put that just like that on the bench. And because I can't wait to find out how bad the shaft looks, there is a guy, he can machine this main shaft, he actually welds it up and then machines it back down a little larger than what it's supposed to be originally, so it's a much tighter fit. But honestly, just looking at it, it doesn't look too bad. I'll get a closer look later. I just wanted to see, you know, do I need to email the guy tonight? But I honestly might just take a chance on it for now and see what it looks like once I can get it out and onto the bench. I will say that this manual for being free you know, it's given me its money's worth, but it's not perfectly clear on some things. And from what I understand looking at it, I think that it's just a matter of removing a snap ring on the shift shaft here. And then the counter shaft uh, assembly or extension, whatever, should come out. So let me get a picture. Let me get my phone out and take a picture because it'll last longer. Now this is the snap ring right here that I am removing. There we go, okay. I'm gonna start a new row right there. And meow, hopefully, uh, this comes out and over. Yes, it does. Oh, snap, I, I've got a lot of parts in my hand. Let me see if I can put that back. I feel like I've got extra stuff coming out. Just kidding, let's try again. I'm gonna to try to lift it by the actual shift fork. I think this is like fifth and sixth or fifth or maybe reverse or hyperdrive, but we've got that out now. Okay, so apparently this is saying that it's fifth and sixth. I think I'm just gonna lay it on the bench as is for now and disassemble it later. Can't really stand it up on its end, but I should be able to tell that this splined part goes down into the uh, counter shaft there. So I'm just gonna lay it like that. Okay, so looking at the manual, the part I just took out is fifth. Now I'm gonna pull out sixth gear and it's got caged bearings with it. So I'm gonna put my thumb kind of in there and try to get all this together as one assembly and hopefully not forget how that went in there. When you hear everybody going on and on about billet fork pads or whatever you wanna call them, what they're talking about is, this is a, the fork pad right here. This is what actually, um, this synchronizer is gonna be spinning. The fork is stationary. And those little pads, you know, go in here. And this is, that synchronizer is going to move back and forth to engage the gears. These pads do break. And right here you can see this nylon factory style pad did break on uh, the 5.6 synchronizer assembly. This one's still good. 
I really haven't decided yet if I'm going to do billet. Uh, there are pros and cons to it. Billet actually wears more from what I've read, uh, but is not as prone to failure. Uh, so basically it's a matter of bronze versus nylon. Uh, the nylon factory ones are a lot cheaper and I don't plan on abusing this car a lot. I've, as I get older, man, I just appreciate having this thing. I've had it over a decade now and I like to have fun with it, but I'm not gonna be really slamming the gears around a lot so there's that i've gone as far as i can go without removing the transmission case uh, i was just working up in this area here now it's time to remove this cover uh, that's on the top of the transmission if it was on the car you can tell that it's the top because here is the vent tube so hopefully these bolts come loose a little bit easier I don't know how much torque that little Amazon cordless ratchet can handle, but when in doubt, I get out the tried and true Pittsburgh ratchet and then go back to being lazy. Seeing all of this RTV reminds me that I need to go to Harbor Freight and pick up some more. If I want to put this thing back together. Hopefully the right way, we'll see. There's not really a designated prying spot on the cover, so I'm gonna to try to kind of gently push from the back side in here, maybe. Maybe not. There's enough of an overhang on the cover that I was able to kind of get a screwdriver and kind of knock it loose. Maybe now I can finish getting that out of the way. As best I can tell, here is where something is actually not in the Tremec manual. It only specifies this one pin, and very clearly, this one's gonna have to come out too. Because this, right here, this, where the shaft comes through, this case is gonna have to slide up off of this shift shaft. So I'm gonna make my own judgment call and I'm going to go ahead and knock out this roll pin as well. Well, that wasn't the best call in the world to try to do that one first because that roll pin goes straight into the shift guide here. I'm going to go check my GM manual before I go any farther and I think I'm going to call it a night. All right, it's now the next day. Last night I went inside and spent some time trying to find some clear instructions on how these roll pins come out. The issue that I'm running into is obviously they need to come off this, this shift shaft. So both of these pins need to come out so that the case can, can slide up um, and then these get removed. Problem is this upper pin, when I try to drive it out, it hits the, uh, offset lever I think it's called and I can't get it out far enough to, to free the uh, little skip shift lever here. I spent like an hour last night and a couple hours today trying to clarify this and all the instructions I found just really blazed through this. They're like knock out the roll pins and slide the case up. I still don't understand exactly the order that this needs to come out. So I'm thinking I'm gonna try to knock this roll pin out first, slide this little uh, detent thing down and then that might give me enough room to clear knocking this roll pin out if this can slide down enough. Let's see if that idea actually works. Okay, so that roll pin is now somewhere. Let me see if I can move this detent lever down. It's definitely free. Maybe I can move it to the side even. Aha! So I think now that this one is kind of separate from the shaft, you can see how it's moving independently. If both roll pins are in here, these just move in the same direction at the same rate and it doesn't help. But I think this might get that pin out now. Let's see. Let's try it. I should just be able to clear it and I'll take a picture to show you what I'm dealing with here. 
if I rotate the shaft or the uh, detent lever over, <clears throat> and kind of lift this up a little bit, there's just enough room to now clear and let that pin come out. So those roll pins are gonna go back there on the table. Now they say to lift the case up and these will slide off the shaft. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing laid over on the table. In order to lift the case up, I gotta undo these bolts. So I went ahead and used a breaker bar or you can use an impact wrench, either one, to break loose all the uh, adapter bolts here that hold the adapter plate to the main case. So I'm gonna finish taking those out. Now all the adapter bolts that were holding the adapter plate to the uh, main case here are out. I'm gonna go ahead and tip this back the way it was standing up again. Even when it comes to taking out these bolts, I'm still putting them up on the bench to try to help my odds moving forward and, and reassembling to try to get everything put together. Before I attempt to pull the main case off, I've still got to remove the uh, shift guide, uh, shift lever guide bolts. And that's where that uh, big Torx bit's gonna come in handy. I'm not gonna go all at these 100% right now. Uh, from the factory, I believe they're Loctited in. This thing's been rebuilt at least once. I don't know if they Loctited it again. Uh, when they put it back together, but I'm gonna give it a little bit of torque, see if they'll come loose, and if they don't, then I'll move on to the torch, but I'm just gonna try this first. Okay, that one came loose pretty easy, or snapped, we'll find out. And that one, not so much. So I'm gonna take my propane torch and heat uh, around the bolt here just in case there is some Loctite in there. I'm just gonna go pretty gentle at it. The red Loctite is, if that's what's on it, it's gonna hold pretty steady until it gets hot enough to melt. I'm not looking to tear this thing up and cause a really big headache. Either way, this might help with some expansion of the aluminum around the bolt. Uh, to help loosen it up a little bit, we'll see. Not quite. Try a little bit more. Okay, it's loose. I feel like any time you've got a stuck bolt, there's just always that vision in your mind of it snapping or getting rounded. Like you wanna talk about anxiety. It's up there with using one of those coil spring compressors. So I'm gonna put these bolts up on the bench uh, with the others so that hopefully that jogs my mind on reassembly that, hey, this all needs to go in there at the same time. Now, if my calculations are correct, I should be able to pry the plates, uh, the adapter plate from the case down here and hopefully break the RTV loose. And there's not much holding it on there. That's, that's nice. The RTV in there wasn't holding on much. The trick here is gonna be holding on to these little pieces and removing the case at the same time there's a detent ball in here and a spring and apparently if you're not holding on to that it'll fire the thing across your shop and i don't want to spend the rest of my life looking for it or waiting on a new one so i'm going to be really careful about that but okay i heard something fall but I didn't see anything fly across the shop, so that's good. Maybe. Okay, there's that detent ball. 
there's your little detent ball. Don't lose that. And there's where the detent ball goes. Get it to focus. Um, it goes in there, and of course the spring is there too, so don't let that fall out either. I'm going to go ahead and move this case off the bench and out of the way. There's not a lot that I need to do with it right now. I'm going to inspect the bearing races and make sure that they're fine, but I don't plan on replacing those unless it's absolutely necessary. And I'd rather have the room right now, so let me put this over here in the corner. As far as my nerves go, what I did yesterday is really kind of the easy part. Down here is where the reassembly can get tricky. Uh, you've got a lot, a lot of levers going on down here. You've got uh, your shift fork. It's got the original uh, aluminum shift forks in it, which I'm kind of surprised because I know that car was abused before I got a hold of it. So I'm going to take a quick second to look through the manual over here, kind of get my bearings again. Yeah, <laughs> bearings. And then I'll be back. For your information and my own, when it comes time for me to reassemble, I just wanted to point out that those little guide bolts that we removed from the case that I was so anxious about, those actually glide in these little uh, keyways right here. There's one, and then the other is right here. So when I go to reassemble it, I'm gonna to try to look through the bolt holes and make sure everything is lined up there. All right, next up it says rotate fifth sixth and reverse shift rail levers off of shift interlock plate which is this okay i'm going to start a new row on the bench maybe maybe not i don't need one i've still got room so that comes off and uh i'm gonna put that over here on the bench can you sense my confidence level dropping i'm just kidding i'll be fine then remove the counter shaft. By the way, before you do that, it does say to lift up the main shaft enough to remove the counter shaft. And then remove the main shaft and first, second, third shift rail assembly. Oh, I'm sorry, first, second, third, fourth shift rail assembly, which should be this. I've got everything pointing with the downward end to the right. So I'm going to try to keep it that way. And this is going to come loose from the input shaft, which by the way, is kind of a cool thing. Fourth gear on these transmissions is actually a one to one ratio. All it does, there's not really a, a fourth gear per se. Let me move the camera so I can show you what I'm talking about. This is not really your fourth, fourth gear here. This is the, kind of the input that goes to the counter shaft that moves power around to the other gears. All you're doing when you're putting the transmission in fourth gear is you're just locking the input shaft to that synchronizer right there. This is the third, fourth gear synchronizer. So that's all you're doing. You're just putting power straight from the input shaft right out the drive shaft. Kind of cool. And that being said, input shaft should lift right out from here and the bearing race looks good enough in the synchronizer ring and the gear actually don't look too bad gears are pretty hard metal so i mean they it's pretty hard to tear them up let's point the camera at the bench take a look at the main shaft the synchros the gears and see what it looks like hopefully it's not too bad so far I mean, it's better than I've expected. Right here on the main shaft is where the fifth, sixth gear, uh, driven gear, mates to the main shaft. And I can see a little bit of wear on the splines here. I mean, this is really something that you got to decide how cheap you are. Um, and I'm pretty cheap. So that doesn't look that bad. I could probably get another... 60, 70, 80,000, 100,000 miles out of that if I take it gentle. What really tears these things up is when you just hammer on it on the highway in fifth or sixth gear. You're putting all of that torque right here on these splines and it's just not good for it. As long as I don't do that, I think that's gonna be acceptable for quite a while. I think real quick, I just, out of curiosity, I wanna kinda of take a look through this main shaft down here and see, uh, ultimately I'm gonna put it in the press and pull everything apart 
but for now I just want to kind of take a quick look at what I'm dealing with. By the way, I want to point out that if you get down here and you start playing with your 3-4 slider, you can get it into third, but when you try to pull it back out of third, it's my experience was just came right off. Just keep that in mind. Kind of maybe take some pictures or something before you start really pulling everything apart on how it goes. This is the bearing that goes between the input shaft and the main shaft here. The race looks fine. The rollers look okay. So I don't think I'm gonna bother replacing those for now. Looking at the slider for uh, third and fourth gear, there is some rounding happening. Uh, you can definitely see, I mean, this is just something that happens with time. Of course, the more worn the uh, friction cones are that are supposed to do all the actual work, uh, the, the harder the, the teeth on the, the gear are gonna hit this and gear is usually harder, so it'll, it'll wear this out. At least that's, you know, hopefully the way it goes because the gears are pretty expensive. This will all, like I said, have to get pressed apart over in my Harbor Freight press. If you look at this main shaft, which outputs power, you can see that uh, it's pretty easy to tell which gear is first, second, and third. First gear is the one back here. It's the largest, just like it would be on the back of your bicycle. That's, you know, the, the lower gear there. And as I pointed out, fourth is just a direct one-to-one -one drive. That's one of the things that I find fascinating about the T56 is fifth gear is an overdrive gear already. Sixth gear is just Uber overdrive. To be honest with you, beyond looking at this slider hub here, it's kind of hard to see really how much wear I'm going to be dealing with and what's going to all need to be replaced until I put this in the press and start taking it apart. So I think I'm going to call it another night and we'll pick up with putting this in the press and getting everything pressed apart. Let's go ahead and finish stripping down this main shaft. I am going to leave the uh, little tapered bearing on the end here. It seems in good enough shape in my opinion that I'm just going to not bother replacing it because I do not want to reshim the transmission if at all possible. For one, I don't feel up to it. Two, I can't even find shims right now online, so I'm just doing the best I can with what I got. This large tapered bearing needs to come off, but there is a rubber O-ring down here that's not holding it on. I wouldn't say that it's really, you know, doing much to hold it in there, but it won't come off until this little O-ring is removed, and hopefully I can do that without tearing it. So let's go ahead and slide this off. Now with any luck, this tapered bearing should slide off. Look at that, it slides right off. It doesn't feel loose or anything and it, it's not grinding when I rotate it. So I, again, I'm gonna leave that off and I'm gonna continue my orientation of putting things down as if they were going down on the shaft as it's aligned straight up. Now, first gear should slide off and there'll be a uh, caged bearing underneath it. If I can get it all off in one piece, I'll just put it down on the table that way. So that's what first gear looks like. Nice, big, strong teeth on it to get the car moving. And there's the caged bearing that lives inside of it. Another thing that you want to inspect at this point is going to be the teeth on your gears. Um, to me, first gear, unless you're going to be downshifting into first gear a lot while the vehicle is moving, um, these teeth, as long as they're not real flat, I don't plan on bothering replacing this. Um, if you think about it, when you're driving, probably 90% of the time when you go into first gear, you're going to be stopped. And these cars have so much torque that there's not really much of a need to go down into the first unless you're stopped. So, uh, you know, again, if you really, really want to replace this gear, go for it. But I mean, this one looks satisfactory in my opinion. So I am going to keep it. Now that first gear is off the shaft and on the table, we can get to removing the first and second gear synchronizer assembly. There's a lock ring right here. So I'm going to get out my lock ring pliers and get that off the shaft and onto the workbench. Now this part may or may not need to be pressed off. Let me go check the instructions. The manual implies that if I press off second gear, that the synchronizer assembly and everything else should follow with it. So this is how I got the main shaft set up in my press, which is just a Harbor Freight 20 ton press. The large cutouts on the plates that came with this press seem to fit second gear pretty well, better than any of the other cutouts. So I've got that set in there, just both plates oriented like that towards the center. 
seems to put good support on second gear. I'm gonna replace it anyway, but I really would rather not tear it up just in case. Now I'm gonna get this centered up right underneath the ram. I'm also wearing safety glasses in case any of the chinesium in these plates explodes. And uh, as I try to press out the main shaft, I'm gonna make sure that it doesn't fall uncontrollably and damage the tapered bearing or anything like that. So let's start trying to press this out. This press is pretty slow, but it was also cheap. So, you know, it works. I'm gonna watch everything really carefully here and you know, look to see if there's gonna be any movement. I can go ahead and get this out of here for now. Well, I could have before I lowered the ram on the press. But anyway, I'm still gonna watch and see if there's any progress being made before I just go cramming all the force I can into the shaft here. Far as I can tell, it seems to be working quite well. I just gotta be ready for this uh, shaft to fall. Because right now all that's supporting it, of course, is second gear. And there it goes. So let's drag this back over to the bench again. This should slide off now. I'm going to try to kind of keep everything together, the caged bearing inside, the gear, the synchronizer assembly, all of it. The longer I can keep it together, the less likely I am to forget how it goes back together. And there is everything still assembled together with second gear on the bottom. I'm gonna put it on the bench for now. Try to keep it all together. We're gonna to press off third gear the third gear is going to press off in a similar manner, except uh, I've got to rearrange the press now because the main shaft is flipped around 180 degrees. So I'm going to have to raise this up. And say what you want about Harbor Freight and their you know, cheap imported tools, but the truth is that store makes jobs like this possible for guys on a budget. And it is one of my favorite places to shop. It's saved me a lot of money over the years, at least as much money as I've spent. And, you know, while their tools may not all be perfect, I have yet to really regret buying anything. If I get something super cheap, some of their super cheap tools, yeah, I mean, you can almost expect them to fail after a job or two, but I've bought power saws. I mean, I've bought impact wrenches, a lot of things from that store. And so far, none of them have really let me down. Now for third gear, the smallest cutouts on these plates fit wonderfully, but you gotta be really careful. See how I've got this set right here? This ring right here is actually part of the main shaft. So do not press it like this if you're trying to do this job yourself. Move the plates out just a little bit so that only the gear is actually setting on the plates and now it should be safe to press out. I like to be honest in my videos and I nearly just made a pretty big mistake. I almost tried to press off third gear without removing the lock ring that's holding everything in place. Had I done so and really tried with that press, I'm sure I would have messed more than a few things up. So this just goes to show everybody's human, everybody makes mistakes. So let's get this lock ring out of the way and then try to press the gear off. This one is much more challenging than any of the others so far. The fact that you got the splines right there. I'm expanding it as far as I can, but it just doesn't want to seem to budge. I guess my lock ring pliers are just too small for this, which is really frustrating because I bought the ones that I really thought would work. That lock ring was a real nightmare to get out with those lock ring pliers. I think maybe they just were a little on the small side for that. That said, hopefully I can get third gear to come off the shaft pretty easily now that that lock ring is out of the way. Rookie mistake, but 
things happen and thankfully I caught it before I did any real damage. Again, as I'm lowering the ram here, I want to make sure that everything's pretty straight and centered. And once I begin actually pressing the shaft out of the gear, I want to make sure that I've got a hold of it underneath, uh, you know, down, down below here, so that it doesn't just fall into the ground and damage the splines where the drive shaft goes or land on my foot, that kind of thing. But it looks like that bearing will clear just fine, so I can leave that on there for now. And it's free. Here is third gear that we just pressed off on the bottom. This is third gear. This piece is the synchronizer assembly or the, the center hub of it. And then in between the synchronizer assembly and the gear is going to be your actual friction cone or blocker ring. I think they're also called now is the time that I'm going to kind of make note of things I cannot suggest strongly enough to take pictures as you go as well of how these things kind of fit together. That's an advantage of me making video of all this is I get really you know, forgetful. I can always kind of go back and reference how things go. So because the gear went on like this, I want to put the bearing caged bearing and uh, I believe that's called a thrust washer if my memory is serving correctly this late in the day. I want to put that just like it would go uh, once everything is assembled. Really I think this would help a lot and I hope that it will help me a lot to have everything kind of in clusters and now when I get my new parts in I can go pick this up and grab all my, my third gear parts and, you know, replace the, the three, four slider, those kinds of things, you know, take it one step at a time. I would not recommend breaking everything down into, you know, individual components at this point to try to remember how it all goes back together later. Now it's time for me to take a close look at second gear. Uh, I want to see if I need to replace that. I've got the shaft put away for now off the table. There's, you know, there's only one way everything can go back together with that. So I just put that together on the other side of the shop for now, give myself some more room on the bench. So as I mentioned, second gear is one of my big concerns here. Let's take a look at it and see how it looks. I'm gonna to try to get the synchronizer assembly off all in one piece with the blocker rings and friction cones and all that stuff in one piece, kind of like that. And I'm going to set it right back where second gear was for now. Oh, missed a piece. That's better. What I want to look at is the teeth on second gear here. These should be shaped fairly pointed, almost like the, like the roof of a house. They should have a nice slope to them, and that's what helps the, uh, you know, the synchronizer ring kind of slide onto it, right? Um, the synchronizer uh, slider and the gear should have pointed teeth. Once the friction cone matches everything together at the right speed, they should slide together real well. But if you like to run around power shifting a lot, you know, just super fast, trying to get, you know, bang gears as quick as you can without giving things time to match up, you're gonna wear these teeth real quick. And this transmission, unfortunately, is a very good example of that. Um, I've noticed second gear, I mean, on a six speed, you know, one, two, really, I guess any transmission, but, you know, first gear, second gear is real fast. Second to third is gonna be a little bit slower because you're trying not to money shift into first. And then of course, third to fourth, you know, if you want to, you can just slam it in there just about as hard as you can, and you're not real likely to go back into second. This transmission is a good example of that. I knew when I bought this car and I saw the drag radial tires on it and all the rubber slung up around the rear uh, wheel wells, that it had been driven pretty hard. And while second gear is not that, that bad, I might replace it just because I really do like driving this car and I do like the smooth gearbox. So, I mean, I'll try to get some kind of macro pictures, but you can see where it's, it's real beat up on a few of the teeth. And that's likely why I was feeling that buzz going into second. Of course, if the, the friction cones are real worn as well. So 
Okay, so this is part of your one, two synchronizer assembly. You've got this inner ring that is shaped like a cone that fits into the friction cone here that is also shaped like a cone, so like that. And it's got clutch material on both sides, on the inside and the outside. Then you've got the outer ring here, which I may also replace. See how torn up those teeth are. Ideally, the slider hub is gonna contact this first uh, and, and do most of the matching before it really gets to the gear. This side doesn't look too bad. And then in here is the actual slider. You can see how it, you know, slides. And again, these should be pointed like the roof of a house. These, these should be shaped like teeth and they're not. They've got some pretty deep, deep gouges in them as well. So this assembly, at least the slider part of it is gonna get replaced as well. I've got that in my shopping cart right now. I just wanted to take a look through everything and see what all I would need. When you put this back together, if you're having problems, make sure that there's three shift keys here, which I'll inspect again later. I'm gonna replace them anyway. Go ahead and get those aligned so that it should drop right in. And again, I'm going to slap all this back together so that I don't forget how it goes. And the shopping list goes as follows. Uh, new synchronizer rings, uh, you know, these, this one's reverse. Uh, I'm going to get new ones for, for the whole thing. All, all gears one through six in reverse. Some of them look not too worn, but while I'm in here, they come as a kid anyway, so we're gonna do that. New sliders, uh, the outer pieces for the synchronizer assemblies. I'm gonna get the new one for third and fourth, also a new one for first and second. If I can bring myself to spend the money, I'm going to replace second gear, first gear. As I pointed out earlier, I'm not really too worried about. It shifts pretty well still. I'm also gonna get new uh, keys for first and second, third and fourth. Uh, these aren't broken, which really amazes me considering how the car has obviously been abused before I got it, but I'm gonna replace these. I'm not doing billet. I'm just gonna get the factory replacements and likely a new seal, uh, maybe for the front, definitely for the tail shaft where the, the drive shaft slides in. Before I forget also new snap rings, new lock rings for the entire thing. I think that's just a good practice to replace those. I'm gonna get new fork pads because one of those is broken and I'm just gonna replace those as well. It's part of a small parts kit that I ordered that just came included, so may as well replace them. The only bronze part that I'm gonna put in here is going to be the isolator cup where the bottom of the shifter actually goes in and operates the shift shaft. I'm gonna get one of those. Uh, the nylon one in here is it's pretty old and a little loose. Uh, so I'm going to replace that with bronze, but besides that, everything's going to go back to stock. Thanks for watching. If you want to see me reassemble this T56, here is a link to that video and another showing how I removed it from the car. For more automotive DIY content, including plenty of F-Body related videos, be sure to subscribe to my channel. And if you found this video helpful, please hit that like button. I sure would appreciate it.